the other day, um, when I was praying about this, I thought, well, God, what am I going to say about all this, uh, what's happening, and also for, when I go on screen tomorrow, and uh, I, um, he just said the word Egypt to me, Egypt, Egypt, that country, and uh, got the Nile River running through it, and uh, I was just reading from Exodus 5, 14, verse 24. And this is when the, this group of people called the Israelis were in bondage in, Israel, in this Egypt and they were slaves to the Egyptians. And the slave, and Egyptians treated them very badly. And they'd gone down there because of a famine many, many years before. But it says that God heard their cry and he decided to take them out from being in bondage. And, uh, you know, God can take us out from our bondages. We've all had bondages in our lives at some stage and God's in the business of setting us free. It's good news. And anyway, it says in verse 22, 22. Exodus 22. No, verse 22, Exodus 14. 14. Oh, 14. Sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I've got to get this right. Chapter 14, ex uh, verse 21. And Moses stretched out. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the Israelis went into the midst of the sea on dry land and the waters being a wall to them on their left hand and right hand that's very descriptive do you know that and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea even all Pharaoh's horses his chariots his horsemen and in the morning watch the Lord through the pillar of fire and cloud looked down on the host of the Egyptians, and he discomforted them, and bound and clogged and took off their chariot wheels, making them drive heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. And then the Lord said to Moses, um, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters came, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, and upon their chariots and horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength and normal flow. And the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians and shook them off in the middle of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and all hosts of Pharaoh that had pursued them, not even one of them remained. And the Israelis walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters became a wall to them on their right hand and their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and the Israeli Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw their great work which the Lord, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done, and the people feared the Lord and trusted in him. It's an amazing story. And uh, really briefly, I'm not I don't want to dwell on the whole thing, but they had a problem. And the problem was that they had to have something happen. And you know, it wasn't anything they could do. And I, I, the, if I was to title this, I would call it, God did something. God did something. God did something here that no, nobody else could do, no human being could do. He took them through a, a, an ocean experience. Um, and so we need to trust in God. I mean, I believe this is a prophetic word from God that he will do something about coronavirus. Okay? Because he did something there and he gave me that ver those verses. And he's going to do something. You need to have faith that God is going to do something at this day. You need to have faith that something so and supernatural is going to happen that you will be surprised. It will surprise the whole world. And the next one is Jonah 2, 9, Jonah chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. And Jonah was in 
Jonah was thrown in the ocean as a whale swallowed him. And he was in that whale and he said these words. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I vowed. Salvation and deliverance belongs to the Lord. And God and the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. God did something. He couldn't do it, but God did something here. This is another example of God doing something when you can't do anything for yourself. He did it. God is going to do something in the future about stuff that's happening at the moment. It, he made this world. He, he's made the universe. And he's made you and I. He's made us perfect. And he's going to have to do something about the situation. Because God has not sent this virus. It is a, a demonic thing that the devil is trying to take the world out. He's trying to kill everybody in the world and upset everybody's lives. And God's going to do something about this. For, and even for you and I, it will reach right to your very door. Even reach right to your very business. Amen. 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 And the next one was, you've already mentioned this, um, Andrea, is Daniel 6.22. Wow. That's not a coincidence. That's the Holy Spirit. I love it. Amen. Oh. And Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. He was put in this den of lions, are going to be put in a den of lions, because he continued to worship the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, in spite, and, and when everybody was not supposed to worship anybody except the, what the king put out. And so in verse 20, uh, uh, 26 of chapter 6, um, well, starting at verse 20. And when he came to the den and to Daniel, Daniel's already in there, he cried out with a voice of anguish. The king said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, son, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. He didn't abuse him for what, had, for what the king had done. He just said, live forever. Hey, that's a blessing. To say that to somebody that tried to kill you, that is a blessing. God's into blessing. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent and blameless before him. Also before you, O king, I have had no harm done, had no harm, had done no harm. Then the, then the king was exceedingly glad. Look, this is another, another situation where God did something. The theme of what I'm talking about is that God did something, he's still doing something, and he's going to do something. In fact, he's on that case already, in the world situation. We are the, we are the creation. He loves us so much he sent Jesus, but he also loves us so much he's going to do something about the situation. It's in his hand, it's in his heart, it's in the heart of God. All these situations here, it was in the heart of God to do something about the three situations I've talked about. It was in the heart of God and he accomplished it and brought it to pass perfectly. Hallelujah. Um, you know, it says in Acts, um, when Peter come out of the, I'm not going to read these verses, but when Peter come out of, the, out of that prison that time, do you remember Peter was locked up and the angel came and touched the, 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 uh, um, the shackles that were around him and they fell off him? And the angel said to Peter, as they're going, gird up your loins, gird up your loins, gird up your loins. I think in those days that... Um, People wear very loose, loose clothing, but when they're going to do something important or do some work or run, they actually took that loose clothing up and they girded it around their loins and didn't and come. And I believe God's calling, calling for just the believers or whoever else to gird up their loins and face this manifestation that's encircling the earth and see it completely eliminated. Amen. Amen. See it eliminated. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the other thing is that all of us know that in some ways this world has been a playground. It's been a playground. We've, we've gone through amazing times. The last 20 years, 30 years maybe, people have been able to achieve the desires of their heart. They can go boating if they want to. They can go on, a, they can go on cruises if they want to. They can um, in, enjoy barbecues if they want to. They can enjoy doing all manifestations of things, motor racing, all, all things. that are nothing wrong with them. They're all been, but it's been like a playground. We could enjoy anything we like. It's been a playground. But right now, in the last, this month or last month, it's turned into a battlefield. There's no playground thing about this world we're living in at the moment. It's completely changed. And it's a battlefield. And I want you to know that God's saying, it's changed gears. Not that he, he's tried to get rid of that from people. That wasn't his plan. But... The virus has changed everything. And you need to know that God is going to restore this world in a way that uh, maybe we don't understand and it may not look quite like it used to. But we are given a chance to get our second wind. When he sorted it out, we were going to have a chance to get our second wind. If you've been a runner, you know there's a time when you're running that you can actually get your second wind and move and start running in power again. And I believe God's going to give us, give the world a, a second wind, something that's different, but it's going to be all right because he's going to put it into place. Amen. Amen. Um, I, uh, I, I've never, um, I've been a church pastor sort of my, most of my life, but I, I believe God's given me an anointing for prophetic words. Prophetic, say prophetic things, say things with power, say things that are good, say things that he's doing before he does them. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's a good God and he loves us. And if he could make the whole universe, surely you have to believe that he can fix this stuff up. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and all the other thing is that in, in Romans 8... In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, and I'm just about finished. This is what I want you to read or just listen to. Romans 8, 37. Um, if I can find it. Yet more, yet amid all these things, that's everything. Everything that's wrong, right, whatever. Amid all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Say it. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. And gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. That's Jesus. That's what we have. It's our, it's our portion. And the last thing was that Jesus said... Peace I leave with you, not as the world leaves it, but as from me. Peace I leave with you. He wants to leave his peace, whoever is hearing this today, leave his peace in your heart. And I'm praying right now, it goes right in, that you will carry this peace in your heart. You'll be a radically different person. Do not, be, do not let the, the surroundings and the circumstances affect you. Hold Fast in this peace. Hold fast. And understand, you're no longer in a playground at the moment. This is a battlefield. And how long we're going to be doing this, I don't know. But I tell you what, God has your interest in his heart. Actually, every one of the people that can hear me and see me on this video, he's got your interest. And you can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And if you can lock those cares in on him, you won't have to carry the burden of those cares. Don't talk um, negatively. Put, talk positively. Bible stuff. You know, he, he cares for you. And his peace is on you. And he can, he can change this thing. Lord, right now I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will totally, totally give assurance in every heart of every person that's in sound of my voice. That everybody that will know that you're in control, 
that you came and you gave us Jesus when we were lost. And his resurrection proves that you are a true God, that you have put us right with you through your blood. And we have need to know fear, that fear would leave people's hearts. And there will be an amazing, amazing manifest of your peace. And Lord, I uh, know we can't meet with anybody else at the moment, but when we come out of this, may people know that your peace is upon us. We ask this all in your yes. mighty name, Jesus, because of you, Jesus, the lovely, lovely Saviour of the world, the sin bearer, the Lamb of God who took our sin. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen.